Anyone fascinated by the natural world has probably wondered why some animals have such strange looking sense organs. The elephant with its huge ears. The antennae of a butterfly, which up close look like feathers. The snake with its split tongue. And what about less obvious enhancements, like the sensory cells on a crocodile's skin? Surely these evolutionary traits aren't just for decoration. In fact, the size, shape, and location of these animal sense organs is all for a purpose. And just like us, animals rely on their senses to communicate with each other, find their way around, stay safe, and most importantly, to find food. When you see how superior some animal senses are compared to those of humans, you might wonder how we ever managed to stay on top of the food chain. Animal super senses. You won't believe what's possible. In this episode, we'll explore the animal sense of sight, and you'll see there's a lot more to this than meets the naked eye. The human imagination is limited when it comes to animal senses. People with good vision are sometimes called eagle-eyed, but eagles can see a fish from many dozen meters away. Scientists believe that the first sets of eyes evolved around 540 million years ago, after an extinction event. Their original purpose was as straightforward light-detecting organs. With evolution, eyesight has come a long way. Today, vision is a critically important sense. Only you won't believe how some animals see the world. We often talk about a bird's eye view without stopping to consider what that means. But the eyesight of birds, such as eagles, falcons, and owls, is several times sharper than ours. Eagles can spot rabbits from miles away, while hawks and buzzards scan the earth from heights of 10 to 15,000 feet, looking for tasty rodents. And once spotted, these birds can dive at speeds of over 100 miles per hour and still keep their target in focus. To match that kind of speed and agility, humans have to build jet fighter planes. The eagle eye is among one of the most fascinating in the animal kingdom. As an eagle descends from the sky to attack its prey, muscles in their eyes continually adjust the curvature of their cornea and lens to maintain an accurate focus on their target during approach and attack. The Nanking kestrel is common in open country in Australia. It hunts during the day for insects, mice, and small birds. Like all falcons, the kestrel has relatively large eyes. Not only do they have an elongated strip of dense light receptors, they also have two circular fovea as well. The circular ones are in a pit, and this acts like a telephoto lens, magnifying the image. The Nanking kestrel will hover above its prey from a height of 50 feet, detecting food that may be only a few centimeters in length. It's certainly an impressive feat. This incredible eyesight makes them extremely effective hunters. But kestrels have another weapon in their sensory arsenal. They can see ultraviolet light. By following the ultraviolet light naturally reflected off the scent and urine trails left behind by rodents, they can track down their prey. Now you might take one look at an owl and think it doesn't look particularly dangerous. Just be glad you're not a worm. Owl's eyes are large, often weighing the same as humans. We also know they have forward-facing eyes, which give owls stereoscopic vision, very useful in judging distances. 
Oddly enough, the best way for small creatures to stay safe from an owl may actually be to move towards it and not away. As it happens, owls are long-sighted. The breed of owl who has the keenest daytime eyesight is called the eagle owl, a tribute to just how sharp-sighted eagles are. The eagle's vision is much sharper than ours, operating a bit like a telephoto camera lens. Just imagine being able to see an ant on the pavement from atop a 10-story building. That's the eagle way. One animal that birds of a different feather must always be on the lookout for is, of course, the cat. That'd be cats of all shapes and sizes, actually. Because from the mightiest lion to the most placid domestic cat, most felines have superb night vision. I think that's an interesting thing. This one piece will make 52 layers. Watch on mobile devices or the big screen. All for free. No subscription required. But of course, it's the big cats, such as tigers and lions, which have the most powerful night eyes, something which enables them to hunt under the cover of darkness. Cats also have a reflective layer behind their eyes, known as a tapetum. It enhances their eyesight in reduced light circumstances. One visible effect of this are the bright, shining eyes that stare back at you when you point a flashlight at a cat. Not all cats are nocturnal, though. Cheetahs are fast daytime killers. They don't need the trickery necessary for nocturnal sight. The cheetah thrives in areas of open terrain and savanna. When prey is spotted, they use their phenomenal speed to give chase. Their exceptional eyesight, along with their speed, allows them to be such effective predators. But what makes the cheetah's eyes so super powerful? Mammals have a layer at the back of the eye where sensory cells respond to incoming light. On this layer, there is an area that is denser in sensory cells, called the fovea. And here, the cheetah is formidable, too. The elongated shape of the cheetah's retinal fovea gives it ultra-sharp wide-angle vision, enabling them not only to chase their prey, but also make sudden turns with near-perfect accuracy. It is thought that the dark tear marks beneath their eyes may also enhance their vision by cutting down on the sun's glare. Cheetahs just don't go running around at top speed on a whim they deploy their keen eyesight to scan the environment for signs of prey. With its distinctive spotted coat providing camouflage in the high and dry grass, its speed and agility, plus those unforgiving eyes, the cheetah is one dangerous customer. Now, of course, there's one big cat that seems to rule over all of them at least as humans perceive things. But you don't become known as the king of the animals unless you have finely tuned senses, and that's where the lion lords over most other predators. Their eyesight is a significant factor, especially when the sun goes down over the savanna. While in daylight hours, a lion's sight is said to be about level with ours. At nighttime, they shift gear. You see, lions are believed to have eight times better night vision than we do. Lions apparently see things in blues and greens. And while they would be lost in a completely pitch black room, for example, there's a lot of moonlight and starlight on the African plains. And it is this which guides them, usually, to their next midnight snack.
But let's not forget their not-so-distant cousin, the cat. This includes feral felines, such as this particular Australian wildcat, but also ordinary household domestic cats. Cats are by far the most active at dawn and dusk. The term for this is crepuscular, in case you ever wondered if there was a word to describe their frantic activity at sunrise and sunset. Night vision comes in useful at these hours, and cats' eyes have six to eight times more rod cells, sensitive to low light, than humans do. Cats have greater range of peripheral vision, too, so in the corner of their eye, they can spot that trembling mouse hiding in the corner. The elliptical shape of cats' eyes, larger corneas, and the bright tapestry make them natural-born night stalkers. This cat certainly doesn't look as if he's going to let his prey get away, and its patience and persistence can be weapons too. And now, we examine an animal which seems to break all the rules. It can change skin color and look in two directions at the same time. There are around 160 species of chameleons dispersed across the globe in rainforests and deserts, from the Middle East to Sri Lanka, though half of those species live on the island of Madagascar. These lizard kings vary greatly in size from a length of just 15 millimeters to 68 centimeters and have coiled tongues that are sometimes twice the length of their body and can feed on insects by using their tongues like ballistic missiles. To accurately use such a weapon, chameleons need superior sight. Eyes are mounted on conical turrets that can move independently of each other, and upper and lower eyelids are joined, with only a pinhole large enough for the pupil to see through. The structure of their eyes gives the chameleon 360-degree vision. Working like a tiny telephoto camera lens, their eyes focus super fast, zooming in on targets at phenomenal speeds. When prey is spotted, both eyes can be focused in the same direction, and the result is a combination of sharp stereoscopic vision and incredible depth perception. As if that wasn't enough, chameleons can see both visible and ultraviolet light. Chameleons exposed to UV light apparently become more social animals and even show more interest in reproduction. Your humble, everyday bumblebee comes with ultraviolet vision. In all but a very few rare cases, UV light or ultraviolet radiation is invisible to the human eye. These waves come at different frequencies or wavelengths. They lie on a spectrum from longest wavelengths to the shortest at the other end. Our brains interpret the different wavelengths as colors. But humans can only see a very small part of this spectrum. Most of the light in the universe is invisible to us, but not to honeybees. Bees, like many other insect species, see from approximately 300 to 650 nanometers. In simple terms, this means they cannot see the color red, but at the lower end of the scale, they can see the ultraviolet spectrum, which humans cannot. 
It is no coincidence that many flowers have ultraviolet color patterns. These are patterns invisible to the human eye, but which catch the eyes of the bee. Bees depend on nectar and pollen, which means they have no choice but to find flowers. Some of the ultraviolet patterns actually look a bit like helicopter landing pads. It's as if they're being directed to landing zones where they'll find the part of the plant with the most nectar and pollen. True, bees have an acute sense of smell, but the bee's super sight is what detects flowers at a distance. Every time a bee drops in, some of the pollen gets stuck to the little creature, which means it'll probably deposit it later in another flower. And so, the circle of life continues. Bee eyesight has evolved to be in tune with flowers, but also, plants and flower have evolved in order to attract bees which they need, in order to transmit pollen from one plant to another. Put succinctly, that's how they reproduce. So if anyone still talks about the birds and the bees these days, that's how it all got started. Polarization is another amazing visual super sense, one that belongs to one of the most fantastic creatures to grip the human imagination. But now, we turn to the place even darker and more mysterious, and that's the ocean and the ocean floor. For octopi, the super sense of polarized sight is critical, aiding and abetting their search for prey, but also enabling them to communicate with their fellow creatures. The chromatophores and iridescent cells on the skin of an octopus create visual patterns that transmit signals from one octopus to all the other octopi that happen to be in range. These chromatophore patterns change depending on variables such as whether it's mating season, or for example, if the octopus is alarmed. These changes in pattern are how octopi communicate with one another. But polarized vision also allows them and other cephalopods to zone in on otherwise transparent prey, like jellyfish. The octopus is, of course, an invertebrate. It literally has no spine. It is also a cephalopod, an exclusively marine creature. Cephalopods are characterized by their bilateral body symmetry, which in everyday terms means they look roughly the same on one side as they do on the other. They have a prominent head and several large tentacles attached to their body. Eight, of course, in the case of the octopus. Squid and cuttlefish are also cephalopods. Like the octopus, they too can distinguish the polarization of light. The octopus is considered one of the most intelligent of invertebrates. The octopus's eye develops an invagination, or in-pocketing of the skin. Be that as it may, each octopus eye has a retina, a cornea, an iris, a lens, and a fluid-filled interior, and is quite a piece of evolutionary engineering.
And now, on Super Senses, a fish like no other. The archer fish, which is usually found in fresh water, is quite unlike any other fish because the archer fish finds its prey living outside of the water. Insects, butterflies, spiders, and other small creatures are the archer fish's habitual prey, and it typically searches for victims resting on branches or twigs just above the water's surface. The clever archer fish then positions itself underneath its prey and with the pinpoint accuracy of a sharpshooter, knocks it off the branch and its perch with the blast from a powerful jet of water shot from its mouth. Archer fish are remarkably accurate, usually hitting their intended target on the very first shot. The hapless creature then falls into the dip, and the triumphant archerfish swims to the surface long enough to retrieve its meal with the satisfaction of a job well done. Their eyes are able to correct for the way light distorts and bends as it enters the water. It's the unique structure of their eyes that gives them a remarkably accurate aim. Recent research has found that the archerfish has parts of its retina tuned to whether it's looking at the aquatic or aerial field of view. The bottom part of the retina looks up, which means the archerfish is looking out of the water. And the top of the retina looks down as the archerfish looks below the water surface. One of the most peculiar looking animals of land, sky, or sea, the mantis shrimp has possibly the most complex visual system on this entire incredible planet. As it scuttles along, looking like a particularly large and crustaceous caterpillar, the mantis shrimp's eyes don't miss a trick. They have compound eyes for one thing. A compound eye consists of hundreds or even thousands of individual photoreceptor units. The image perceived by the owners of compound eyes is a combination of the input from these eye units. Just to make things more interesting, the mantis shrimp's compound eyes are mounted on mobile stalks, which move independent of each other. It can detect ultraviolet and infrared, and all of this is achieved, the experts reckoned, without any intervention from its minuscule brain. Well, that's just about it for this episode of Animal Super Senses. The way animals see the world has offered us fascinating insight to the richness and complexity of life. We've seen things from a bird's eye view and used our ultraviolet vision underwater. We've had the night vision on while we roamed the African plains and met the chameleon who can see every which way at the same time. And we'll see too in our next episode how animal super senses can take you to some interesting places.
Anyone fascinated by the natural world has probably wondered why some animals have such strange looking sense organs. The elephant with its huge ears. The antennae of a butterfly, which up close look like feathers. The snake with its split tongue. And what about less obvious enhancements, like the sensory cells on a crocodile's skin? Surely these evolutionary traits aren't just for decoration. In fact, the size, shape, and location of these animal sense organs is all for a purpose. And just like us, animals rely on their senses to communicate with each other, find their way around, stay safe, and most importantly, to find food. When you see how superior some animal senses are compared to those of humans, you might wonder how we ever managed to stay on top of the food chain. Animal super senses. You won't believe what's possible. Welcome to Animal Super Senses, the show that enables you to see it, hear it, taste it, smell it, and feel it like animals do. Animals use sight, smell, taste, touch, hearing, and other special senses to negotiate their way through a sometimes cruel and unforgiving world. On this episode, we travel from the desert to the forest, Australia to Borneo and back to learn how species as diverse as bat ear foxes, the bilby, deer, kangaroo rats, cicadas, proboscis monkeys, and other creatures never miss an auditory trick. In these huge expanses of shrubland, grazed and fought over by some of the most recognizable wildlife on the planet, we find this particularly curious critter. The bat-eared fox makes its home in areas with short grass and low scrub, feeding on mostly insects and invertebrates. get a hold of creatures that small, it helps to be able to hear them. So the large ears of the bat-eared fox aren't just for decoration. They're filled with blood vessels which help cool the animal down during the day. Just as well, because it gets hot out here on the savanna. But their ears are also an effective sound gatherer funneling sound to the inner ear. What's more, these swiveling ears can turn 180 degrees to help locate their tiny prey, as well as the animals that prey on them. Bat-eared foxes have to be especially alert to the sounds of the slender mongoose, brown hyena, and black-backed jackals all of which can kill and eat bat-eared foxes at regular intervals. Good hearing in general is a huge advantage for animals who would rather avoid being eaten. The desert offers lean pickings for omnivores, with sparse vegetation, meaning fewer places to hide.
the bilby seems to spend most of its time avoiding being eaten. A marsupial, in fact the largest known member of the bandicoot family, the bilby is truly a nocturnal animal. They usually don't come out of the ground until long after dusk and head back an hour or two before sunrise. If it's a full moon, or there's heavy wind or rain, bilbies will stay cooped up in their burrows all night. When they do get out amongst it, they rely on their hearing to survive. Notice their large, mostly hairless ears, which allows sound to pass unheeded to the inner ear, and also helps to amplify sound. In fact, it's not unlike the effect of cupping your hands behind your ears. But of course, there's a lot more to animal super sense of hearing than having outsized ears. Take banner-tailed rats, for example. Their hearing is so keen that they can hear wind ruffling the feathers of an owl flying through the forest at night. Yet unlike the bat-eared foxes we saw earlier, the ears of the banner-tailed rat aren't particularly large in proportion to the rest of their body. It's the large feet and hind legs that stand out on this animal. No, with the banner-tailed rat, all the precise audio engineering work goes on inside the creature's ears. Banner-tailed rats have a huge eardrum beating away inside that medium-sized ear and a larger-than-usual middle ear chamber to boot. Large bony structures surrounding the banner-tailed rat's inner ear enhance their extremely sensitive hearing. Size is no guarantee when it comes to animal sensory strength. Some of the smallest animals have the largest powers of hearing in auditory communication. Though their habitat is different, deer are another animal who rely on their sense of hearing to stay out of the way of trouble. You'll note that they too have large pinnae ears which move independently. This directional hearing means they can zone in on where a sound is coming, and it is believed, from how far away, meaning how fast they had better run to get away from it. This, in large measure, is why it is so hard to sneak up on a deer in the woods. And as all those deer hunters out there could possibly attest, deers instinctively distinguish between the sounds it hears every day in the forest and unfamiliar noises, such as the opening of a car door or human footsteps. In some respects, hearing is the most important of deer senses. For though their sense of smell is acute, an ill wind can always blow outdoors in an unhelpful direction, whereas they can rely better on their ears to guide them. Deers also hear things at a higher frequency than humans, though we can pick up on things lower in the spectrum than they can.
Rodents, such as the lowly rat and humble mouse, come with the gift of ultrasonic hearing as standard equipment. That means they can hear in a frequency above the human ear's audibility limit. The hearing range most often means the range of sound waves and vibrations which can be heard by humans and other animals. The easiest way might be to imagine a piano keyboard. Humans typically hear notes in the middle of the keyboard. Others very high or very low are inaudible to us. At the lower end of the scale, rats and mice and other rodents don't just make the squeaky noises we humans are able to pick up on. Oh no, they are able to communicate in a whole rich world of sound and auditory cues, but outside of our range of hearing. Imagine what it might be like if we could hear it. Larger animals that are able to hear things in the infrasonic range tend to have large heads, as in larger than human, and have fair sized ears set wide apart. There's perhaps no better example than the elephant. Of course, elephant ears are notable for a variety of reasons. For one thing, they can move their ears back and forth which helps cool them down. They contain a network of blood vessels, which help to regulate the elephant's temperature, circulating blood through its ears. Elephants can hear things at 20 frequencies lower on the hearing range than we can, in the range known as infrasound. That low rumbling sound you sometimes hear elephants make, that's the thin edge of the wedge. Other elephants can pick up on such rumblings and others we cannot detect as far as six kilometers away. These long distance conversations are useful in letting male elephants know when females are around and if they're in heat. Mating season and this rumble in the jungle is no joke for elephants. It's only for a few days out of every two to four years that females are ready to mate. And that's when they send out this mating call. It's the call that no bull elephant wants to miss. As well as those gigantic flapping ears, elephants can detect sounds through their trunks and their feet. Both come with receptors that pick up on those low frequency vibrations in the infrasound spectrum. When you see an elephant with their trunk on the ground and their feet carefully positioned, it means they're having a good old listen. They could be tuning in to the subsonic rumblings made by other elephants. Or listening out for thunderstorms and the approach of rain.
in the dry season on the African plain, this is a huge advantage, as they can move towards the rain and towards water, which is vital for survival. The large ears of bat-eared foxes and elephants give them their ability to amplify sound. But there's one rather singular animal who uses another part of its body to amplify sound. Because it's important to hear what's going on, communicating your message can be a matter of life and death. To make our case in point, we travel to the world's third largest island, one whose very name has become a synonym for the wild side of nature, Borneo, home of the proboscis monkey. This primate, found exclusively in the wilds of Borneo, has many unusual characteristics. One of the largest and most distinctive of all primates, they have partially webbed feet and make fine swimmers. And it's the male of the species who develops the largest nose. But its protruding nose is also an aid in spreading the alarm when danger is near. When feeling threatened, the male proboscis's monkey's nose swells up. And this swelling means his nose acts as a sound chamber. The monkey's call of anguish or alarm echoes off those chamber walls. Its cries travel further, hopefully reaching females and warning them of impending danger. Most often crocodiles or clouded leopards, or sometimes, sad to say, humans. The proboscis monkey is on the endangered species list. From a nose that works as an amplifier to an up-close examination of creatures in the insect world whose sense of hearing originates in some odd places. Cicadas and grasshoppers carry their ears on their abdomens. while crickets and katydids hear through holes in their hind legs. Their reason for being there? Well, sound detection generally works better when the detectors, the ears, are set far apart. Crickets and katydids certainly need their sensitive auditory system. As most of us know from experience, the leaf-like insect has a proclivity for making a lot of noise, especially on warm summer nights. It's critical for survival to discriminate between the sounds of a receptive mate singing right back and the sound of a bat whose calls may be in the same frequency. Striking a bum note in this case could be a matter of life and death. especially when you consider the animal which crickets and cicadas have most reason to fear, the bat, and its super sense of echolocation. Bats, of the kind the cricket and cicada need to listen out for, rely on echolocation, which in simple terms is like seeing through sound. It's an interesting fact that bat species use echolocation all the time. Bats are generally nocturnal and catch their prey while in mid-flight. Echolocation enables them to decode thousands of sound signals, 
These sound signals bounce back from a tree's leaves, branches, and trunk to build a sound picture of their surroundings. Echolocation helps bats to find their preferred food types, insects such as crickets and cicadas. But the really neat thing about echolocation is that it also enables bats not just to hear a sound, but to really make a noise. Bats generate ultrasound waves through their larynx and emit sounds through their open mouth or nose. Fascinating and recent research has shown that quite conclusively, bat males sing in ultrasound to attract females. What the research seems to prove is that female bats are more attracted to those male bats whose mating calls are more elaborate. Even stranger and more revealing is the fact that both male and female bats sing in secret at a frequency perhaps few, if any, creatures of their environment can hear. It's almost as Bram Stoker put in Dracula, the children of the night, what sweet music they make. The forest at night. Aside from the sound of a bird tweeting, wind blowing, or the crackling of twigs, seems to us a pretty quiet place. But with the right kind of ears, it is a cacophony of sounds. Somewhere in the midst of that primeval dark, an owl flies, almost noiselessly, through the night air. Silent, but violent. The barn owl, as depicted here, is reckoned by some as the most widespread bird species on Earth. Sharp eyesight and the fact that they fly almost silently through the air have a lot to do with their prolific success as predators. But maybe the real stealth weapon in the owl's arsenal is their super sense of subsonic hearing. You won't hear an owl coming unless they issue their signature call, but they will most certainly hear you. Owl ears are also asymmetrical, which is to say the left ear is not level with the right. As with all smart evolutionary design, there's a good reason for this. Asymmetrical ears give them the direction of sound, the difference in time it takes for a sound to reach the right or left ear. Put it this way, owls can hear a rodent moving under several feet of snow from 50 feet away. When you think of it that way, the poor little critters just don't stand a chance. super senses, we see it, hear it, taste it, smell it, and feel it like animals do. The senses are the star of the show, and this episode has been no exception. The sense of hearing has taken us on a memorable journey. But these incredible powers of perception will fight again another day. So join us next time on Animal Super Senses.